Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about one of the key features of SharePoint which I don't see too many organisations using effectively and that is looking at a way of categorising or storing our documents in what are called document sets. So let's first of all talk about what document sets are because you would be forgiven by looking at them just to see them as folders. However, they go beyond what normal folders can do within SharePoint where I can apply metadata to a document set and that metadata that, that can then be automatically inherited by all of the documents that get put inside the document set. But they're not turned on by default. So what we're going to go through is go and look at how we turn them on, how we configure them and how we start using them. So I'm going to be using just a standard SharePoint team site. Now, in order for me to be able to go and start to use document sets, I first of all need to activate them because they're not on by default. So I have to do some site configuration first of all. So in order to do this, I need to be a site owner because I need to be able to get to my what are called site collection settings. To do that, I'm going to use the cog in the top right corner, of, uh, which is my settings, come to my site information, and then come to view all site settings. Now, once I get into my uh, site settings, what I'm looking for are my site collection administration settings. So like I mentioned, I need to be a site owner. I need to effectively be what we used to call a site collection admin. And so if I just scroll down, what I've got down here, right in the middle of my list under Site Collection Administration are my Site Collection Features. So I'm gonna click on my Site Collection Features and in here I have what are called Document Sets. So let's go and press Activate on there. So what this is actually doing is it's going to use what we used to call Features to deploy a new content type into my Site Content Type Gallery. So if I go back to my site settings, now that I've activated that and I come to my site content types, what I can see in my site, uh, in my content type gallery now is that I have a new uh, document set content type. This means that I can now go and do some configuration on my lists and libraries to go and start using the document set. But what we're going to do is we're going to do some configuration first of all. We're going to create a sub content type of the document set, a child, uh, and we're then going to apply that and we can start to see how, um, uh, how our data, metadata then starts to cascade down. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new document set. And I'm gonna create a document set that are used for, let's say clients. And on there, I'm going to have a column for the client ID number. So I'm going to go and create myself a brand new content type and I'm going to call this my client document set. So a document set that's going to contain all of the documents that relate to this particular client. I'm going to configure it. I'm just going to create a new category. And I'm going to set the parent to be the document set. So let's press create on there. So when my doc, uh, document set content type gets created, I've got on here a title, a name and a description, just like I would on a normal, uh, docu uh, on a normal folder. But I can go and add some more columns on here. So I'm just gonna create a new column on here and I'm gonna call this my client ID. And let's just create a new column. And let's just leave it as a single line of text for ease. So now I've got client ID on there as well. But one of the things that you'll see on this screen, which you wouldn't see if you were using one of the other content types, is I have a, new, a setting here called document set settings. Now this is the important part with regards to using document sets. So if I go and click on there, what it allows me to do is determine what content types I can use inside my document set. So for example, if I've got client contracts or client agreements, what, if I've got some client specific content types that I want to use, I can add them here so that when I'm inside my document set and I go to the new menu, 
I'm going to be able to go and create something which is based on that new content type. I'm going to leave it as document for now. If I come down, I can upload some default content into there, which is a great feature. But really what I'm going to focus on are the shared columns. So the shared columns, these are the ones that are automatically inherited from the document set down into the, fo uh, the files. Notice that the one, uh, the one piece of metadata that I've got in my document set that isn't listed here is title. So I can inherit the description, I can inherit the client ID, but I can't inherit the title. And that's because the, uh, the content types of any documents that I put in there will have their own title, which can be overridden. But I'm going to select my client ID right here. And then let's go and hit save. So now that I've configured my document set content type, I now need to go and configure a library to be able to utilize that. So let's navigate back to my SharePoint site. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to go and create myself a brand new document library. So I'm gonna go and click new. I'm gonna go and click document library. And let's call that my document sets demo library. Let's press create on there. So when I first create my document, uh, document library, if I go and click on new, then I've got a folder. I've got my Word documents and all of the other key default types of, uh, of document that I might want to create. There's nothing on there with regards to uh, my document set. So I need to do a little bit of configuration now on the library. Let's go and hit the library settings this time. More library settings. And we're in to this lovely classic page where I can come and see my uh, my, all my settings with regards to my library. Now, what we have to do with our libraries, we have to configure it to be able uh, to allow us to manage the content types. Because if I scroll down my, uh, my settings page at the moment, I've got my settings, I've got some columns, I've got views. There's nothing here at all about content types. So let's go and turn them on by going to my advanced settings and then pressing allow management of content types. I'm gonna scroll down and press okay, and we'll see what happens to our settings page now that's applied. So at the top, I've still got my settings, but as I scroll down, I've now got this content types area that's appeared between columns and my settings. And what's this key thing here? Add from existing site content types. So I can take the content types that I configured in my site content type gallery, and I can add them to my document library. And that's what we're going to do here. So I've uh, selected add. I'm going to go and find my document set demo content type. So that's the category that I gave it. And there's my client document set. Let's press add and press okay. So now if I scroll down, you can now see I've got my client document set listed under the content type. So it's now part and parcel of my library. Let's click back to the actual library itself. Let's just zoom out slightly. Now, if I come to my new, notice that because I've still got allow content type management active, uh, the actual new menu's changed. I can still create a document, I can still, uh, but I can now create a client document set. Let's go and click on client document set. Now, the interesting thing is when we do create client, uh, when we do create document sets, we do get switched back into the old classic uh, view to, to begin with. So if you do suddenly see this, this is expected behavior. It's not completely modernized yet. But let's go and put the name of my client, so Stark Industries. And let's give it a client ID and press save. Okay, so now what I've got, let's just click back to the top level, is I've got a do uh, document set created. Notice that it has a different uh, icon to compared to a normal folder. So if you do see this, then document sets are in play. Let's just click on there, on the content types, it's my client document set, it's got a name, and I've got my client ID. But now if I go and click into there, let's just go and add 
my client ID onto this view because what we're going to do is we're going to go and create a new document. And I could upload my documents, whichever way I want to create documents to get, uh, get something in here. So I've created my document and let's click back to my Stark Industries. Okay, and notice, here's my document. I didn't set the client ID. I set the client ID on the actual document set itself. And so because I configured my document set to share the client ID column with its, uh, with its child content, you know, it's automatically tagged this document with CLI 0001. So this is a great way of being able to reduce the amount of keying in, of setting metadata, especially if tagging is part and parcel of your content strategy, then it means that as soon as I drop a document into here, it's going to receive the shared metadata. I can add met other metadata as well if I want to, I can add more tags, but anything that gets set on the document set and gets set as shared, then gets automatically populated down onto any files that get put in there. So that's a very brief overview of what content types are and how we configure them. As I mentioned at the beginning, for me, this is one of the more powerful features of what SharePoint can bring to us. The ability for us to automatically tag and consistently tag our files when we drop them into a document set. And it's something that the, uh, will get be done automatically, so I'm not expecting my users to be able to go and, or to have to go and do it. But now that we've started to explore this, what we're going to look at in the following videos is we're also going to look at the automation opportunities around this as well. How can we automatically create document sets? How can we automatically create them and uh, set the tags so that uh, when we go and drop files in there, they're already receiving the metadata? If you do have questions about, con uh, about any of the content types, any of the document set uh, information that I've covered during today's video, please do post in the comments. Please do let me know if there are any subjects that you would like me to cover. But otherwise, I hope this video has been useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one when we talk about Power Automate into, con uh, into document sets.